in this video, because it's a continuation on from uh, well this video, I'm going to start at this stage, which is shown more or less three quarters of the way through this video. And uh, although it's going to use the same material, or some of the material properties, it won't be using image-based lighting. So here we are with our neon response, and I'm just going to go into the Skylab and turn off the HDRI effect there, which has the effect of resetting the sky, and if you reset the sky you should remember that the intensity needs to be set back up to 100. So at the moment then, we've just got the sunlight providing this effect, which is clipping along the edge. And I was thinking this edge clipping effect might be useful to sort of try and fake subsurface scattering, because it is only along the edge and the areas on the inside are darkened because of the metallicity effect. So if we go into the material lab here, and look at this effect now as it stands with just a single light source like that what I'm going to need to do is make it transparent and that has the unusual property that parts of it disappear and parts of it are disappearing because it's got no refractive index so I'm going to set that up at 153 to make it like glass and set the transparent color and the volume color to the diffuse color but you can see it's still quite dark inside even though the metallicity is set low, so I'm going to set that lower still, but leave it there. Okay, so now that's looking very bright because of the extreme response of the specular. So I'm going to switch that down a bit and reduce its intensity. So now, in parts, it's looking quite promising, but there's sorry, this very harsh line, which is the result of the high specular halo. So I'm going to modify the specular halo down to a lower value. Let's try that. So I've still got some specular halo but it's only really when, if I can position it so, we're looking through the back where the specular halo is striking the inside that it's looking more like the effect I'm aiming for. So that gives us this effect, which is like a very heavy, dense glass. And if I position the sun behind the head of this dragon, you can see I'm getting a bit of that response here but it's not very exaggerated. Now what I wanted to show you was, and this seems to be a peculiarity of regular rendering mode, if I go into the Sun and Moon tab and give it soft shadows, even a very low level of soft shadows, it changes the specular response dramatically as you can see. So that's that's quite a nice effect, it's not really subsurface scattering but it's a nice effect. So at this stage you can see it's only going to take a couple of minutes to render out and that's because of the soft shadow setting and even if I turn the soft shadows up to 100 it doesn't seem to have much impact on the effect but it does on the shadows but it doesn't have any impact on the render time so it's just the fact that it switched to, sh switch to soft shadow seems to have created this highlighting effect on the dragon's head so that was interesting uh, but then I thought well if we're going to try and simulate scattering in this way, you should probably be using the transmission, blurred transmissions. So if we go to premium effects, I'm going to set the raised pixel down for speed and this maximum ray depth down as well in case things get bouncing around inside the model. The thing is, sorry it's from Camtasia Studio playing them, yep, uh, right, the thing is if we use blurry transitions and soft shadows, it, it returns to the state where it's dark again. So I say this emphasis seems only to be a result of the regular rendering mode soft shadows. You can see it's doing it regular there and that looks quite bright but in the premium effects that effect doesn't happen. So I'll just turn that off for now. We'll head off in a different direction. I'm going to turn the atmosphere off and set it to fully black and then position the sun rim behind our model here so you can see what's happening. So this is this has got blurred transmission through the model which has created quite a nice effect but it's not really that dramatic so we're going to modify the material again I'm going to set this back down to 100 and increase the specular response to get more of an output from it I'm still using the blurred transmission so that's working with the specular highlight and you can see now that's created a different quality to the lighting so if I increase the metallicity, that will create some suppression on that edge, probably a bit too much there. I might be able to offset that with more specularity, not so much so. So let's go for 0.05, so we've got some highlight, a bit too much. It's just a matter of balancing these effects out until you get the effect you want. I'm going to turn the specular halo back up 
that's probably going to be too strong let's have a look okay that's turned out a bit bright there so let's hang on a second really it's just a matter of balancing these effects out so if I turn the metallicity up a little bit uh, let's cut into that and set the specular halo back down to I don't know about 240 there so that's reduced the effect of that let's have a look where we are now okay we're getting somewhere closer now so I've got this the, the, the exaggerated neon effect going on a bit but with a with the premium effects it's, it's softened the the transition effect a bit. I could probably speed things up by just getting rid of the ground plane for now since the shadows not really only need the shadowing within the material to get this effect going so if I wanted to emphasize this edge just a bit more well I could uh, I could I could try modifying the spec if I reduce the specularity that's going to reduce the transmission I could I could move the light source so it's higher up so it's more on that top edge but we're really sort of losing the effect I was aiming for there so that's probably about the best uh, it looks a bit like uh, it's, it's tra being transmitted through the material although it's going to take a long time to render so that might be worth experimenting with there um, I don't know whether that uh, whether it's, it's going to be worth let's see we'll take the speculite boat Ten that takes us back to sort of the the neon outline look, which is quite nice, but uh, it doesn't look like very realistic like, like anything. I quite like that effect though. I think I'll save that one. Oh, what's in that? Okay, right. Uh, so there's a, there's a few options here. There's the the glowing glass head. Right. Let's go back then into regular mode, and I'll just render that out there. That's gone back to our neon outline. I'll shift the sun back up so it's glancing across the top and if I go back in here and uh, introduce soft shadows that'll emphasize that effect at the top so that should uh, but I've not got the scattering effect now so it's just going to be where the sun appears as it did before but it should be possible because this uh, is a, a negating effect where the metallicity comes in to, to offset that with another colour perhaps by using ambient so if I was to choose an ambient colour here I don't know like this orangey colour then and feed some ambient in through the global ambient that's quite nice so it looks like it's it's being heated up so here I got the metallicity effect is subtracting from the ambient colour in the material so here we've got the ambient colour and you can see that we've got the refraction at 100. So let's try. I'll try turning the refraction up and see what effect that has. See whether it breaks up some of those lines that are appearing in it. Oh, that's quite nice. So we've got a mixture of the neon effect and a sort of glassy effect. And if I add uh, reflection, is that going to do anything for us or not? I don't know because it's a completely isolated environment. There should be some intermaterial reflections then, which is probably just slowing the render down. So I might lose that effect. So let's get rid of that reflection again. You get some reflection automatically with the refraction, but that will be being affected by the level of the metallicity. So if I take this metallicity up ever so slightly, you can see it's taking more light out. So that's going to suppress the outline deeper into the ambient channel. So I can bring the, the light over further, allow more ambient to spread up through the model. And that's created quite an interesting transition effect there. So I could go on for well for hours probably experimenting with this but I just wanted to show you that there were a f there were a few more options available with uh, with these extreme properties um, than, than just just explored in any one video and that there's, there's probably plenty of things left to discover that uh, they're hidden in there when they offsetting these effects mainly the interesting things happen when you've got the effects coming into balance so you've got an extreme effect in one direction and an effect in another direction as we have here on this transition where the ambient color which is providing the light at the bottom part of this model is getting sucked away from by the metallicity effect which is having this negating effect and then we've gone to this quite sharp outline so it's quite an unusual looking render uh, obviously it's taken a while to render because of the soft shadows but it seems to need that to 
push the effect and uh, that, that is an unusual thing so there you go I'll let this render out I'll render out a couple of the other ones like the, the glowing glass head and uh, whatever whatever the other one I saved part way along I can't even remember now and I'll, I'll, I'll put those up with the video as well okay then so I hope you found that interesting and that you'll explore these things on your own